All right. Today I'm going to be making fajitas. I uh, I normally do this with a uh, ribeye steak. I usually get three of them, but today they're a little bit pricey. They're uh, what about 17 bucks I think for three of them. It was ridiculous. So I, I didn't go that way. I usually get them cut thin. And this meat here, this is uh, if you can see, it's a beef top round. Uh, it's a beef top round steak, and I only got it for just under eight dollars. And they're sliced really thin, and so I'm going to roll with that and try it out. I ain't going to make a bit of difference, but I've got to get them marinated. But I'm going to take them out of this. We're going to chop them up in real thin slices and uh, show you what we're doing for the marinade so they can uh, get a lot of flavor in there while we chop everything else up and get her going. All right. I'm actually only going to go with three of these. There was uh, six total in there, but uh, I'm doing a lot of other things in here, too. It's not going to just be the steak. I'm going to do and recreate what uh, I like over at a certain restaurant, <laughs> nameless, but they call it uh, mushroom jack fajitas, and uh, that consists of the steak. It's going to have shrimp, which was on sale, go figure, huh? So I did pick up some shrimp, it's only like six bucks a pound, so uh, got the shrimp, got the steak, and of course mushrooms, and we'll be uh, throwing that all together with some sauteed veggies. And uh, like I said, we got to get these things marinated. So I'm going to slice them all up real thin and, and get that rolling. Okay, there we go. I got it all sliced up. Now slicing through it, I could tell how tender it was. It was very easy to cut. So I'm not going to have to take it through the next step uh, I would normally go through if it seemed a little bit like it was a, a little tough. Because I don't want it to be chewy. That's the last thing you want to do with fajitas. So that being said, let me tell you what you would do if you've got some some meat that you need to tenderize a little bit when it's this thin, okay? This is probably about a quarter of an inch thick. And this is something a lot of people don't know. This is a trick that's usually used with uh, Mongolian beef, which is sliced really thin. You would take this and you'd put it in a pitcher of water. And you only need enough to just cover it, but the water, depending on how much, you're going to add baking soda to it. And usually for about uh, two quarts of water, you're going to go two tablespoons of baking soda. So if you use a quart, of course, you can use one tablespoon of baking soda. And only 20 minutes. It's going to eat at it in the water, okay? And then once the 20 minutes is up, you're going to pour it out. You're going to rinse it. Make sure you rinse it, okay, before you do anything else. But I'm telling you, that will help break it down and make it to where it's not so chewy when it's, it's sliced up this thin. Okay, next step, since I'm going to avoid that one, marinade. Take your favorite marinade because I am going to cheat. If you want to make your own, awesome. I'm sure there's tons of recipes for it. I'm not going to do it. This is my favorite. I am not advertising this brand, but you know what? I'm telling you what, this is badass. Jack Daniels Mesquite for this mushroom jack steak fajitas is just the way to go. So I'm going to load this, this bag, which has already got the pre-made marinade in it, and uh, throw it in the fridge while we prep everything else. Okay, there it is. I got it all incorporated spread out evenly, got it mixed up real good. Now let me step back and tell you, since I mentioned that uh, I normally like to use uh, ribeye steaks, uh, I like them thin, but I do not, I do not cut up ribeye steaks. I put the whole steak in there and marinate it and grill it, okay? So be absolutely clear that you cook your steak the way you like it. I do it a medium rare, and then when it's done, then I slice it all up. Mmm, that's the way to go. But this way, I'm improvising. So we're going to throw this in the fridge and we're going to prep everything else. All right, the next step is going to be this bacon real quick before we get started on the vegetables. This uh, mushroom jack fajitas is topped off with bacon and uh, sometimes you got to go to the very end of the recipe and get it going while you do everything else to move forward. So we're going to throw this in the oven and get that going while I slice and dice. Okay, as you can see here, I've got the uh, veggies going. It's real simple. I chopped everything in long lengths. It's half a bell pepper, half of a yellow bell pepper, it's half of an onion. Of course, you can double this if you're trying to feed more, but between this and uh, the steak and shrimp I'm going to be doing here, uh, it's going to be enough uh, to feed uh, the three of us. So, um, do the tomatoes here in a bit because I like those cold. They're not going to be cooked, but these are going to be sauteed. And uh, to start out, when we go here to the uh, skillet, we've got the uh, bacon here. All good, as I showed you before. It's all cooked. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to steal some of this bacon juice 
to do some of the sauteing because I like the bacon flavor in the bell peppers and the uh, onions. So sauteing those with this is a good idea. Of course, it's not the healthiest, but I'm not going for health. I'm going for flavor and, and taste. So I'm not even going to lie about it. Let's just get her done. Get it incorporated here. Get that going. Next, I'm going to work on the uh, the shrimp, and we're going to saute that too. Almost forgot the mushrooms. <laughs> Wouldn't be mushroom jack fajitas if I didn't have the mushrooms in there. My bad. There you go. All right. You know, what we're going to do here is, is the shrimp. I've got about a pound's worth of jumbo whites that I I went ahead and uh, splurged for because they were on sale. Um, I'm sure I already mentioned that before, but we're going to start out with a, a couple tablespoons worth of butter here. And uh, I'm going to throw down some garlic. I like a lot of both for this. Get it off the heat so it doesn't burn. A lot of people don't realize that the secret to recipes like this, and really just about everything that's out there, is to not combine everything, like throwing the shrimp in with the steak or throwing it in with the vegetables. We're going to cook everything separate so they get their individual flavors by themselves, and then you combine it all. That's how it tastes so magnificent. That's how it gets all of its unique in, uh, individual tastes, where everything just pops in your mouth like crazy. They've got to complement each other, don't get me wrong, but you've got to uh, you've got to cook them separate. No point in contaminating everything either. All right, we're going to let these sit here for just a little while, and we'll come back to it. Uh, steak is next. Now, what I did here is I chopped up the tomatoes real quick, and I uh, chopped up the bacon. Now, that's not all the bacon. We don't We certainly don't need that much bacon, but we love it. We'll just snack on that throughout the day or maybe use it tomorrow. Anyway, here's the steak. It looks like it's already cooked, but it's not. This is just fresh out of that marinade basket that, that I uh, put together uh, earlier. And uh, to tell you the truth, earlier it means yesterday. I went ahead and let it marinate overnight, so this, this fajitas video is gone on to the next day, and we're going to be throwing that in as soon as we transfer all that. That's the next step. As you can see here, the uh, shrimp is good to go. And this is where I'm going to go ahead and combine it with the veggies. So a lot of that garlic and that butter flavor in there. And now we can shake down the two, turn it down to a simmer, give this pan a real quick rinse. And what we're going to do is start doing the uh, the steak. You ready for this? This cooks pretty fast because I sliced them all up in small pieces. I've got the temperature up way high too so I can just kind of sear the outside and keep a medium rare on the inside. Just my personal taste. Should only take a couple minutes. Alright, check it out. These are good to go. Go ahead and kill the heat. Back over here, I'm going to do a squeeze of lime juice all over the place in there. And uh, we're going to do a, a shake of some salt. We're going to do a, a little bit of pepper. Get that stirred up. And uh, got the tortillas out over here already. Now all i got to do is, is load a plate and show you what we're going to do next. I like smother this sucker in cheese. Remember, jack cheese, mushroom, jack fajita, jack cheese. Very important. All right, check it out. Threw a bunch of that down here on a plate. Let's get the, uh, the steak. Oh, it's dark. 
throw that down there in the middle. Throw down the cheese. Got to do a lot of cheese, and that's what it's about. Got to have that cheese on there. Just smother it. Don't even be scared. And here's where the uh, the bacon bits comes into play because uh, that just sets it off. And uh, what I do is I keep the oven going from when I I cook the bacon, hold it here just a few minutes back, and uh, I throw these fresh tomatoes here on top. And I throw this bad boy in the oven. Ah! If I can get the room. Just to melt her down real quick. And then we'll serve it up. And back out again. Let's check them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that doesn't look good at all, does it? And loader. Okay, we got a little bit filled up in that tortilla. I like uh take a little bit of uh avocado slices in there. It's pretty good. A little bit more fresh tomato. Tomato. And some fresh lettuce. And then uh, I'm using big tortillas because we like them like a burrito, but I'm going to roll that bad boy up and serve it to my wife. Let's get a good look at it here in the light. And see what we're talking about. There you have it. Mushroom jack fajitas. <laughs> 